Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erin and today I'll show you an old trunk makeover. Every other day I search for antique fabrics or clothing to make dolls' dresses and I store them in a huge suitcase. But to tell the truth, I was running out of space for all those fabric even for this big suitcase. So to be able to fit everything, I bought another one big old suitcase. It looks really nice and it is very roomy, but unfortunately its condition is far from being perfect. The plywood on the cover has come loose and is peeling apart. The paper covering the suitcase is partially decayed, partially torn off. In general, there's a lot to do. But all the hardware is fine, all the locks work, and I really like the overall look. First of all, I'll take care of the cover, and I've decided to replace the plywood. First, I'm removing the decorative corners. Here, the nails that held the corners were all rusty, and in a couple of places, the nail heads simply broke off when I tried to pull them out, but after some struggle, I did it. I'm taking off the damaged plywood. Before attaching a new piece, I've decided to glue the frame of the cover. And here the plywood has delaminated too, but I've decided to keep it. So I'm smearing all the layers with wood glue using a thin splinter. I'm smearing the frame on both sides to be sure the glue will leak all the way down. And then I'm clamping the plywood on both sides to assemble the whole plywood cake back together. Here I'm placing plastic bags so that the cover frame doesn't stick to the wood pieces I use for clamping and to the suitcase base. I'm gluing the entire frame like this, as well as one of the sides of the suitcase. Perhaps it was sitting somewhere in a barn and water was dripping on it, because one side and the cover are in much worse condition than the rest. To make the new cover, I'll use leftover backing from some old furniture. I'm tracing the old cover on the new plywood to have the perfect match. And then I'm cutting it out. I've used a hand saw here, since it's still too cold to work outside, and I didn't want to use a jigsaw here in the workshop, as it would create too much dust. I'm coating the joints on the frame with glue and clamping it together with a rope, so that they sit a little tighter. And then I'm coating the frame with glue and attaching the new plywood cover. Now I'm nailing it to the frame. I'm waiting for it to dry and now I need to sand the new cover a little to round off all the corners, as on the original cover. I still had to deal with some dust here, luckily I was able to connect a vacuum cleaner to the sander to reduce it. And the new cover is ready. Initially I didn't want to remove the hardware from the suitcase and I was going to cover it with new paper or paint it as it was, but later I changed my mind. Painting wouldn't work here as the plywood seams were quite large, so I needed to cover them. And it would be impossible to attach new paper neatly without removing the hardware. So I'm removing the hinges, the corners, the locks and pulling out all the decorative nails. In many places they broke, as they became very rusty and brittle, so I'll have to replace them. I'm placing all the hardware into ziplocs and labeling them, so as to attach them back to exactly the same places. I've decided not to remove the aluminum strip on the cover front edge, as I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to insert it back later. So I'm just opening the edge gently with a screwdriver to be able to slip the new paper in the air. I'm peeling off all the old paper, removing the handle, and now the suitcase has turned into a wooden crate. 
The hardware is quite rusty, so before returning it to place I want to clean it. I'm removing the rust with gasoline and steel wool and in most damaged areas I'm also sanding it with fine grit. I'm spraying the hardware lightly with black paint and then wiping the paint off in some places using a solvent. It turned out very natural looking and at the same time I sealed all the remaining rust. As I have already mentioned, I've decided to replace the nails. Our local hardware store had only antique bronze colored nails in stock, so I've also tinted them black. In an art store I've bought several sheets of pastel paper in a burgundy lilac shade. It is not showing up very well on the video, but this paper has a beautiful embossed texture, like fabric. First I'm slipping the sheet under the aluminum strip on the front of the cover. I'm coating the cover with white glue and attaching the paper. Best is to sprinkle it a little with water so that it stretches out evenly and once dried it will stretch back and the surface will be perfectly smooth. I'm covering the front and the back edges of the cover first and cutting off the excess paper. And then I'm covering the sides. I've started covering the base of the suitcase from the sides. I'm cutting out two pieces of paper to fit the sides and part of the bottom till the place where the straps used to be. Here I'm starting at one edge, folding the paper to make an allowance on the inside of the suitcase. Then I'm attaching the side itself and finally I'm gluing the paper to the bottom. After that I'm attaching the paper to the front and to the back of the suitcase. I'm cutting out the paper with a small margin so that there was a light overlap at the corners. And at the end I'm covering the middle part of the bottom. I've decided to replace the straps with ribbon. I only had bright green one, so I've painted it dark brown with acrylic paint to match the suitcase. I also drew the stitches along the sides of the ribbon with yellow paint, but in the end I changed my mind and repainted them brown. The yellow stitching looked very much like a denim stitching, this was not needed here. I'm attaching the ribbons to the suitcase using latex glue. I'm covering the edges of the ribbons with outside corners. And then I'm returning the decorative corners, the outside corners and the legs. I haven't attached everything as it was too late already for making noise, so I've decided to decorate the outsides first. I'm sealing the suitcase with a matte spray sealer so that the paper becomes stronger and doesn't absorb moisture. I wanted to keep the romantic vintage flair that the suitcase originally had rather than make it look brand new. So I'm distressing the corners of the suitcase using Doric wax. I'm applying it with a cloth and blending into the paper. I couldn't blend the wax on one of the corners well and in order to make the distressing softer I decided to add some clear wax. And you know what? I really liked the effect. The paper became darker, a little glossy and looks like a fiber surface, which I really like. So I've sealed the entire suitcase with clear wax. I'm skipping the middle of the cover here because I want to stencil and paint will not hold well on wax. Next I'll make the stenciling. This stencil is in French and says something about cloth and underwear, taking into account the fact that I will store antique fabrics for doll dresses here, the writing is just perfect. 
I'm attaching the stencil with painter's tape to the center of the cover and applying black paint with a sponge. The stencil had rather thin cutouts, so the pattern didn't show up completely after applied with a sponge. I had to replace it with a stencil brush. Then I'm removing the stencil and voila! Now that the paint has dried, I'm sealing the stenciling with wax too. Here, by the way, it is clearly visible that after the wax has cured, the surface became a bit lighter. And finally, I'll finish installing the hardware. I'm nailing the corners to the cover. I'm installing the locks. First, I've installed the lower part of the locks on the suitcase. Then I've closed the cover. I've latched the upper parts of the locks. And I've nailed the upper parts like this, so that everything matches and the suitcase closes well. I had to clamp it while doing that, so that the cover wouldn't open from hammer blows and kept the position I needed. I'm installing the hinges, the central lock and finally the handle. We've bent all the nails holding the hardware on the inside. It was done just like this originally, but the paper that I'm going to use for the insides is quite thin, and so I've decided to cover the sides where there are those bent nails with thin cardboard. I did this with the front and the back sides, with the hinges, with the handle, the locks, well, and the bottom too, where nails poked out on the inside, because here the plywood is really thin. Next I'll be working on the suitcase inside. And I'll use a really nice wrapping paper with 19th century ads from an antique Russian newspaper printed on it. I'm cutting the paper according to the size of the cardboard with allowances. I'm coating the cardboard with thin white glue and I'm applying the paper after sprinkling it with water. I'm folding the allowances at the bottom inside out. I'm covering the front and the back with paper in the same way, but here I'm tucking only the top allowance, as I will make an overlap on the sides and on the bottom, so that later the plywood will not stick out at the seams. First, I'm covering the front and the back and straightening the allowances. Then I'm attaching pieces of paper to the sides. I'm not using cardboard reinforcement here anymore, since there are no nails. Finally, I'm attaching the bottom. On the cover, I also had to use cardboard strips for the framing to hide the nails. Here I'm attaching the paper in one piece, folding the edge to keep it neat. I've distressed the suitcase a little more on the outside, around the hardware, and we're good to go! The suitcase turned out to be very beautiful and it will work great both as a prop for filming and for actual storage. It is large and very, very roomy, so I have a lot of space for my fabrics. I'm going to use it for my restoration videos, of course, so you'll see it in one of the next ones. Maybe someday I'll be able to collect a whole pile of suitcases for the workshop. I really like how these suitcase piles look and and I think they will fit our brick wall perfectly. I hope you liked today's project. I also want to remind you I had another video about trunk makeover. I made a nightstand in my son's bedroom out of it. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next video. Bye!